It's Tuesday, it's 12.15 and we're live in Westminster. Rishi Sunak launches the Conservative Party manifesto. The question now is, who is best to turn that foundation into a secure future for you, your family and our country? Further tax cuts and help for home buyers are also promised. Meanwhile, Keir Starmer says this. And they're building this sort of Jeremy Corbyn style manifesto where anything you want can go in it. Uh, none of it is costed. Under a Labour government, there'll be no increase in income tax, no increase in national insurance, no increase in VAT. But would a Labour government increase capital gains tax? And should these energy drinks be completely banned for children? We're talking about three, four shots of espresso in one of these tins. Loads of sugar, right? So absolute nightmare. Joining us today, former Conservative Minister Steve Brine, Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth, businessman and entrepreneur Dave Fishwick, and Reem Ibrahim from the free market think tank, the Institute of Economic Affairs. This is Politics Live Election 2024. Yes, hello. As we come on air, the Tories are still launching their election manifesto. You can see there the Prime Minister at the lectern. He's given a speech to launch it um, at Silverstone, the home of the British Grand Prix. Members of the Cabinet have taken a precious day off their campaigning to join him. Uh, Rishi Sunak still in the driving seat as he presents the party's offer to voters in a bid to move the polls in his direction. They've remained broadly unchanged since the start of the campaign, with Labour 20 or so points ahead. Now, we'll come back to the manifesto in some detail in a few minutes' time. We're going to talk, hopefully, to the business minister from there, Kevin Hollenrake. Um, but first of all, Steve, just a sort of brief word about the location, the choice of venue of Silverstone, the racetrack. I mean, the metaphors speak for themselves. They write themselves, you know, coming off the tracks, going round and round in circles, getting lapped. Why do you think that was chosen? Or, or symbolic of a Brad Pitt film that's being done today, which shows that we lead the world in creative industries. Depends on your negative or otherwise mindset. Um, but actually, if you look at the set that he's doing it, it could be anywhere, couldn't it, really? I mean, we, know, we were told it's a Silverstone, but actually it's the same set as anywhere. I'm quite pleased that we've got to manifesto time. We haven't got anyone yet talking about sharks and boats, reference to Donald Trump in America. But I don't think it has been intellectually challenging enough, this campaign so far. So the manifestos are a chance to really dive into some detail and some policy, and maybe put some scrutiny on the opposition, who are, as you say, 20 points ahead, and they need scrutiny as well as the government. Oh, well, perhaps we can make this programme intellectually challenging enough for you. Always and is, John, Joe. Uh, Steve, rise to the challenge. <laughs> anyway, before we get into it, let's just show you uh, this in the Daily Telegraph. Labour to ban energy drink sales to under-16s. The Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, says party would be far more interventionist when it comes to children to protect their health. Reem, what do you make of the plan? I think it's a, I think it's a really awful plan. Like, I do understand a really the intention. Awful plan. A really awful <laughs> right. plan. Okay. And look, I do understand the intention behind it. It's sort of this, this idea that we're going to protect children mm. on the basis that energy drinks are bad for them. Now there are, there are many other products across on the market that are, of course, bad for young people and bad for children, and indeed bad for all of us. Energy drinks have approximately the same amount of uh, caffeine as as coffee. There's, there's, no, there's no more than that. So are we also going to ban coffee for under 16s? Are we going to ban fruit juice? for under 16s. You know, if, if we're going to apply this logic consistently, that's where we end up. Jonathan? I think it's a really important announcement. And putting children's health first is a huge, will be a huge priority of a Labour government should we get elected. It's something I'm particularly passionate about and I'm really pleased to see this announcement today. As you know, for donkey's years, I was the Shadow Health Secretary mm. and children's health was one of my driving passions, not just childhood obesity, children's mm. dental health, issues around addiction and how mm. that impacts on children. Yeah. I think it's a really important announcement. And on this point about are you going to ban coffee and all that, no, we're not. These drinks, they are targeted at children. My own children are always hassling us as we go around the supermarket to buy these sorts of drinks. We have teachers complaining about the impact these drinks oh. are having on children's concentration. Uh, to be fair, the government did announce it. They were going to do it as well Well, a few you've just years put ago. a thumbs up there, so, Steve. Yeah, I mean, it's not Labour's policy. It's mine, actually. I mean, John was Shadow Health Secretary at the time. I wrote it in the Child Obesity Plan, part two of the Child Obesity Plan, which I wrote when I was Minister in the Department of Health. I mean, look, it's good. We... Um, consulted on it, didn't then carry it through into, into actual policy. Should have. I was unhappy about that at the time, as you well know. 
it needs to come as part as a package on child obesity, which I hope, you know, and I've seen that the mission that Labour Party have put together around preventative public health, and, and I've, I've said that I think that it's the right direction, and I hope that you will actually do it if you win. Um, it that it needs to come alongside, uh, you know, the watershed advertising and a much wider plan, because ultimately this is a publicly funded health system. We therefore have a right and a responsibility to intervene in public health because it becomes our problem when we don't. Yeah. Dave? Better education is needed, I feel, to make better life decisions, not just about health and drinks and energy drinks and things, although they are very addictive and these things do need to be kept a very, very close eye on. But we also need better education around the finance, banking and around APRs, annual percentage rate. We need to teach young people and get them ready for life skills. I'm all, pro, I'm all pro better education, but I'm not pro banning and effectively nannying people. Mm. Now, now you, see, you mentioned the fact that your children, you know, jump at the idea that they could drink a, a prime drink or, or, or those other very popular energy drinks that young people are, are, are sort of uh, uh, wanting. As a parent, it's your responsibility to then say, no, that's bad well, for you, and, and teach your children about a balanced diet. Back and to the education again, isn't it? I think it's ridiculous that we are, we are co constantly calling out governments but, to ban things. Yeah, but, I mean, I wouldn't let my kids buy a can of Stella. On your argument, it's you'd already, let them buy a can already, of Stella. It's already illegal for children to but, buy so, a can so, of Stella. Yeah, no, but, but your argument is, you know... We're talking uh, about alcohol and sugar. You're, you're talking about sugar as though it's an addictive substance. But you're making a libertarian well, yeah, point. As it is. alcohol, but it absolutely is a isn't. huge diabetes problem in this country, a huge obesity problem. This is storing up huge problems yeah. for individuals on their personal health, but a huge, uh, have a huge impact on the National Health Service as well. Especially the dentists that's been talked about just recently. Oh, they're, yeah. they're really struggling with but the But, Dave, are you in favour of a ban? on this or not just to well be clear. do you know what i think i think first and foremost we need to give people the education to then make their own decision we can't become a nanny state we can't tell people you can have this and you can't drink that what we can do is educate them properly to understand the benefits and the non-benefits and then they can make a decision based on but unfortunately sense. it seems as though the consensus across part across both parties both main parties across mm. politics is that the government needs to be stepping in to yeah. telling to tell people what they can and, and look, cannot there's do. good reason for that because uh, the evidence suggests that it's the right thing to do. And look, I get it, the IEA, Liz Truss, Big right. Health, didn't want us to bring in the, the legislation around smoking, which was big lost health. in wash up. That, um, that, was what they, that was what they described it as. There was absolutely need for more no, interventionist public... No, I believe in adults public. making their There own is a need for more interventionist bodies. public health but policy because, about because, because ultimately our health and our health service just hands on it. Uh, don't don't talk to each other. Try and talk across the... Well, do talk to each other, but one at a time. It's not got intellectual so far. Ah, Steve Bryan. Not enough. Um, we're just going to show you again the scene at the manifesto launch. The Prime Minister still taking questions and talking to the audience there. Now, last night, uh, Rishi Sunak did a sit-down interview with the BBC's Nick Robinson in one of those first one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews. He was asked broadly why voters should trust the Conservatives uh, with another five years when they had failed to deliver on a number of key issues. Rishi Sunak insisted his government had started to make progress. Uh, and today he obviously hopes the promises in the manifesto will persuade voters to give the party another look. Um, Steve, is this election a verdict on the past or a vote on the future? Every election is a bit of both, especially for the incumbent anyway. And, you know, if Labour win, then they will be the incumbent next time and they will have to answer their record. So there are many things that Rishi Sunak will be saying at the Random Festival launch today around, you know, 90% of schools are now good or outstanding. That's happened under our watch. Yes, taxes have gone up during mm. that time. And they're continuing but, to. But, you know, I don't remember John's party arguing against the furlough scheme, for instance, when we decided to pay people's wages in the face of a national pandemic when we had a lockdown and took, what, 10% of our economy overnight. That was the right thing to do. And, of course, right. there was an impact to us economically from that. But the Prime Minister's point is that the economy has turned the corner. I think you will see rates come down later this year. And he has already rates made... Of... Uh, interest rates. I think oh, interest rates. The Fed Sorry, make a move, and I think the Bank of England yep. make a move. And you, you've already seen us start to cut taxes, and All he's right. saying the direction of travel is to do so more. John... So, yes, it's about the future, and it's about some of the stuff on the record. Jonathan, is it is it a verdict? You'd like it to be a verdict, rightly or wrongly, on 14 years of Conservative uh, rule of the country? Um, or is it about a vote on the future? Well, it is, as Steve says, a bit of both. And I think what we've seen so far is what we've seen unveiled is what I think is a desperate wish list of promises they cannot fund, from savings they cannot find, because the money is not there. And what you will get with Rishi Sunak, if he is re-elected, is five more years of chaos 
in these future years, chaos that will be paid for by working families in terms of higher mortgages to pay for this long litany of unfunded promises he's making today in this desperate, desperate way. That is the reality of it. Just before I come to you, Dave uh, and Reem, let's just listen to a little bit of what Rishi Sunak has been saying at the launch. We will pay for permanent reductions in taxation by controlling the unsustainable rise in working age welfare that has taken off since the pandemic. In this party, we believe that it is morally right that those who can work do work and that hard work is rewarded with people being able to keep more of their own money. So we will ensure that we have lower welfare so that we can deliver lower taxes. Well, there's uh, Rishi Sunak. I've just been handed the manifesto itself, the Conservative and Unionist Party Manifesto 2024. You can see it here. Clear plan, bold action, secure future. Uh, those are all of the sort of taglines, if you like, of the election campaign for 2024. Some bedtime reading for our guests. I'll be looking through it this afternoon. Um, but Dave, first of all, do you think this is a vote on the past or the future? Well, I think the, the main thing is we need to have a look at people's lives. People are writing to me, one in particular at Burnley Savings and Loans, and said, Dave, I'd like to borrow some money to buy baby milk. So when you've got somebody applying for a loan to buy baby milk, right, we ended up giving them the money free. When you've got that on one side, and then on the other side, you've got bankers' bonuses being uncapped, you're then in a situation where we really do need change. Now, I think I've come up with a slight solution. Have you got your own manifesto? So, well... <laughs> It's, it's written in felt tip. The rebel manifesto. And it's, you know, you can write it on the back of an envelope, whatever, whatever you... Back, whatever, back, back, back. You can write it on the back of an envelope. <laughs> what we need is we need better services. We need people to be able to benefit better from society. And those at the top need to take the biggest burden. Those with the high, highest shoulders, the longest shoulders, yeah. need to take the biggest burden. But Sir Paul Tucker from the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee said £45 billion can be saved by cutting interest paid to banks. Now, they got in trouble with the quantitative easing. Goldman Sachs come out with that report this morning. You take that 45 billion, you put it into the NHS. But before you put it into the NHS, really importantly, we need to stop the water going through the bucket. So we need to plug the holes, find out ah. where the money's going. Well, I think there is a well, hang on, hang on. And let's just remind uh, viewers, because you opened a bank. It was the first time a bank had been opened in how many We're years? We're opening the first new high street bank for 150 years in Britain. We've lent 34 million to thousands of people and businesses Locally, the and UK. they're local. And I've just become the ambassador for the United States for community banks all across the United States of America. Right, you're going to be busy. I mean, Reem, on that basis, what do you make of uh, what Dave has said, about Look. £45 billion pounds that could be saved by cutting uh, the interest paid to banks? I think there is a fundamental misunderstanding that the way in which you improve public services is by simply spending more money and I think we've seen we've seen NHS budgets increase significantly over the last few years we now spend just below 200 billion pounds a year on the National Health Service yeah but could you make could and you could you save 45 billion pounds from that I've not seen the report this morning so I, I couldn't comment on that or on what the Monetary Policy Committee have said but what I will say is I don't think we should be punishing banks or indeed punishing private businesses or indeed punishing those at the top of society the wealthiest you spoke about the the the, the cap on on bankers' bonuses. That's effectively regulation that makes the UK... Uh, removing that regulation makes the UK more competitive. We want to encourage wealthy people to well, come here. I, I, well, to be honest, I mean, people say to me, well, Dave, if we cut these bankers' bonuses below 20 million, then they're but going why? to leave. But I'd say... Let them leave. There's so many people. When you've got on one Why side... Why do you want wealthy people to leave the United Kingdom? You want, you want us to be living in shacks, effectively. You want us to re regress well, back. Well, let, 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 let me answer that, though. I feed 330 children every morning. They wrote to me, did the school headmistress of their little primary school in Colney, Lancashire, asking me, saying, the kids are coming to school hungry. So we stepped in, we bought all the, the, the equipment they need and we pay for the food year by year and we feed 330 children every morning. So on one side, you've got 330 children coming to school hungry. You and on the other the side, solution. you're saying to me, we need to pay people 20 million bonuses. What I'm saying Capitalism, is... Capitalism, the free market, businesses make people wealthier. The solution to poverty is better businesses. It's encouraging growth. It's encouraging economic growth and encouraging people to be here. If all we right. start discouraging people from being here, we will see food shortages. We will see housing shortages. What I'm saying... What I'm saying is, I'm not discouraging people from coming. I'm not discouraging businesses from coming. But if they're going to come to the UK and they're going to take part in our wonderful economy, in our wonderful country, then they need to pay their fair share of taxes. And there's a lot of online companies because and huge companies on, let me bring in who, the aren't, who aren't paying their fair share and we need people to pay their share. 
Steve, there's a disconnect, isn't there, in terms of the view of the UK today, depending whether you're looking through the prism from Dave's perspective or Reams. And that has happened, and maybe it's been exaggerated under 14 years of Conservative rule. And people now, if you fall into one or other category, don't feel politicians are going to improve their lives. Well, yeah, but we have politicians and we have a government that's run by politicians. And if you can find me a better system of, of governance, then, you know, I'm all ears. That well, is our system. But what about 45? Well, people will think, we, gosh, 45 the, billion pounds that you could save from interest paid by banks. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see the workings out behind that. But I mean, look, we... we I'll send them to we you. Have, please do. We have an election and therefore it is perfectly right that there are opinions on the right and there are opinions on the left and ultimately it comes down to people making a decision and you're seeing a manifesto launch today where you're seeing a prime minister's talking about stability talking about security talking about the economy after an incredibly difficult time and people have to decide don't they ultimately yeah. whether in their heart they feel that Rishi Sunak's the man that they want to take forward with that or Keir Starmer and you know I am surprised that the polls haven't closed during this campaign so far I think I said on on the BBC on the night the election was called that I thought Keir Starmer was capable of making a mistake that I thought the polls would close. That can still happen. The reason it hasn't is because there's no lens on Keir Starmer, because, because my party keep making mistakes and then that takes the media headlines. Well, I would say there has been a lens on Keir Starmer and the Labour Party, yeah. and I hope we are doing Later that. this week, but, maybe at Manifesto time, there'll be more. Well, there might be more, but we are starting to do it through the campaign with, what, with the material that we've got yes. in terms of the manifestos being part of that. But when you listen to Reem and to Dave, who, who, who do you feel more connected to? Because the Labour Party, well, the Labour Party well, the aren't going to do it. Well, <laughs> but the Labour Party aren't. Well, in terms of. <laughs> I will. <You're... laughs> well, there you no go. Pressure, John. <laughs> because the Labour Party, broadly speaking, aren't offering anything well, vastly different. And actually, what Dave says is right reform is needed. That's what you're talking about, yeah. but not more money. Oh, hang on, well, let me just deal with uh, the points that Dave made. And first of all, thank you, Dave, for supporting that primary school in, uh, in Lancashire. Uh, I mean, I know Lancashire. I grew up in uh, towards Bury. You can probably tell I've got a bit of the twang in there. the universe. Uh, uh, Radcliffe, if you know it, Radcliffe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, but look, right, the point you're making is children should not be going to school. No, absolutely hungry. not. And that is why one of the policies we've put forward is to introduce free breakfast clubs in every primary school. I like that. That's one of our policies. And on your point about the NHS, yes, we want to completely close the non-DOM loophole so that the super wealthy who come here should pay their taxes here, and we're going to use that money to deliver 40,000 extra appointments and treat It's a, a relatively week small tax-raising measure. It's not transformative. It's not right. if, if you can't get out of the house because you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement, mm. that's radically transformative for your life, We've getting appointments. I, I recently went to Blackburn Hospital and filmed there for a few days, yeah. so I've got some real first-hand knowledge. All right. Straight in. But actually, one of the issues about these 40,000 extra appointments is where are the staff going to come from? Where are the medical staff going to come from? I just need to explain to you, you might be wondering why we're not talking in-depth yet about the manifesto. We are hoping to talk to a minister too, but everything is running slightly behind. I just want to pick up on something Steve said about his hope, uh, obviously, um, as a former Conservative MP, that you hope that the polls would close. Well, maybe this isn't going to help. Uh, the Financial Times uh, headline is Tory ads warn voters of Labour landslide as election bid falters. Social media posts suggest voting for Lib Dems or reform could give Starmer a massive majority. Here's one of them. Uh, you can see there from the Conservatives, if you vote Liberal Democrat, you'll hand Keir Starmer a massive majority and pay the price. Uh, the price tag there being the claim by the Conservatives that uh, people will pay more tax. This is the second one. Keir Starmer needs your pension. Conservatives, if you vote Reform, Labour or Liberal Democrat, you'll hand Keir Starmer a massive majority. A massive majority. So you've conceded defeat. Well, I, I don't write the ads, and anyone in Winchester who's followed my career over the last 14 years will know I don't do negative campaigning. I would much rather... But this is negative the... campaigning against yourself. Uh, I mean, this is a... No, this no, means no, you, you, you've lost. I don't believe that it does keep, concede the defeat. I like to focus on the positive about what people are projecting and what people are saying. I've always done that locally uh, and, and stood on my record locally, and I think the Prime Minister should do that, and that's what he's doing there at launching the manifesto today. Um, in terms of, you know, the £2,000 figure, I mean, that's been well, kicked around a lot, and I has. think you will hear the Prime Minister double down on it a little bit more. He's basically added up all of these promises from the Labour Party. I noticed they're saying today about capital gains tax, no promises in the manifesto require a, a rise in capital gains tax, which is a very clever But there have been plenty of, of examples, it. of course, of people breaching even manifesto promises at the time. 
It's a lie. What, I know. What, you what Rishi Sunak is saying about Labour's tax plans, because Labour is not going to increase income tax, it's not going to increase VAT on national insurance. We're going to cap corporation tax where it is, unless uh, we need to make changes to bring it down for international competitive. Uh, competitive. Well, that is clear. That, that that is our position. They are lying about labour on tax, and the truth is this. Every single one of their promises, they cannot, they cannot fund, they cannot identify the savings. It is a desperate wish list. Just, and well, in the hang end, on. Prime Minister, say there about some of the funding. They have no, no, you obviously missed my press conference yesterday, Steve, oh, when I'm I went so through sorry, every... I'll send you the YouTube clip, yeah. where I went through every item of their supposed savings <laughs> and sh <laughs> explained how they're already in the government baseline. They're already funding the current changes to national insurance. Mm. These future promises they are making cannot be funded and well, this manifesto well, is the most expensive well, piece of, a, of panic from well, the Tory and the Labour Party in, on, in history. You say that, but Steve has just uh, mentioned the issue of capital gains tax, yeah. tax on assets. It's uh, The rates are lower than income tax. You were asked this, we showed it in the yes, headlines, but let's, let's, let's have a look again. You were asked about four times, I think, and couldn't rule it out. Let's have a look. Are you ruling out increases in capital gains tax? Under a Labour government, there will be no increase in income tax. No increase in national insurance, no increase in VAT. You've repeatedly been asked about, like capital gains tax, inheritance tax, fuel duty, is that you're, you're thinking about raising them, thinking about the circumstances in which you might need to do so. As you know, Chris, there's nothing in our plans that requires additional tax uh, to be raised. Will you look to address the kind of stealth tax that comes with uh, frozen tax thresholds? Look, our tax position is crystal clear. There is nothing in our plans that require, requires additional tax to be raised. Right. Can you rule oh, out categorically, please. Jonathan, that you will I, not increase, be, hang on, capital gains tax in the me, next parliament if you win be, the election? Let me be absolutely clear again. We will not increase national insurance, income tax no. or VAT. There is nothing in our plans which require additional tax increases. But that's not, my, but uh, that's uh, not the answer to my question. that require additional tax increases. Every policy we put forward will be fully funded and fully costed. Right. In contrast, Rishi Sunak is making billions of pounds worth of commitments he cannot fund from savings right. he cannot find I'll because come the on money to Steve. is not no, there. Hang on, Jonathan. It'll I'll come on to Steve, but I'm afraid, can you answer the question directly? And it, it doesn't matter if you can't rule it out, but are you ruling out increasing capital gains tax in the next parliament? I am. Um, look, there's a thousand different tax reliefs in, 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 uh, in, mm. in the way mm. these things And are capital made. gains we tax? We've been very clear on income tax, VAT, and I know. We are not. I know. We are you, not. You pledge that, but you're yes, not going well, to plot. It's important that it your is, viewers know it that we've made a that triple have, lock commitment. Yes. On taxation. But not on capital gains and we tax. We want to see the tax burden come down for working people because it's the highest tax burden uh, for 70 years mm. under the Tories. It people is. are paying more in tax under the, the Tories. But we also know the Tories have completely wrecked the public finances because of what Liz Truss and the Conservative Party did to the public finances. And if Rishi Sunak gets in, we'll have five more years of this chaos and people will be paying more on their mortgage. They should there be higher rates of capital gains tax. Should they be increased on businesses, second homes and shares? They are taxed at less than income tax rates and it would raise money. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see levies on the big energy companies that make billions. I'd like well, to see levies, levies on the banks. I'd like to see more of that. So that money can then drift back down into real society and the poorest, and not just the poorest, Middle England are really suffering because they've been dragged with fiscal drag right up through the tax. So how do we get money from those at the top who have made billions and give it to like those the, uh, near the middle? Not, not necessarily the poorest. No, you're making the, the point that we need to be taking money from the top and bringing it down. And to what's the wrong with that? But that's not that's not how it works. We well, it, well, it can work. It can work. It, it, it could work that way, but ultimately, what would happen is those at the top would stop making money here. What we want, I what we want, is to lift everyone up. We want to lift yeah. everyone up. I'm a higher rate the taxpayer, point. and I'm I pay it at the top. Now, I don't mind paying my share. When I go to the dentist, I pay privately so I don't take somebody else's place. That's I've just put my fine. wife in the hospital for something, of a, a, a minor operation to be done. It cost £9,000 and I paid it so I didn't take somebody's NHS place. We I think those pay. at the top should pay more 
they to allow already anybody the else have their turn. The top already paying more than enough. And I think what's really interesting about this is that if we want to encourage the UK to be a more competitive country, we need to be encouraging people like yourselves to be bringing business here. We currently have a corporation tax rate of 25%, again, which both parties brought, up, brought up by the Tories, by the Conservative Party. And we border a country, Ireland, that has a corporation tax rate of 12.5%. I have six we companies border a and the main one of which... We literally border a country that has a corporation which... tax rate that is half ours. Yes, but I have we six businesses, have... one of which is in America, which is the biggest I've got. I pay American tax there and I pay the tax here on the dividend. Right, and the so... other... If you're looking at comparisons, Reem, there are European countries comparable to ours where there are higher levels yeah. of income some, tax as well. And where make, growth it's... has been higher at points over the last 14 if, years. If, if somebody's put the tax up by 10% to me in America, 20% more, 30% more, I'm not going to pull my money from America. I can't see how anybody would pull the money from Britain. That's, it's that's part of individual. being we've the most wonderful country we've like got. We've seen countries like AstraZeneca paying their pull, pay pull, inve sure. pull investments, like pe companies right. like AstraZeneca pull investments let, as a result of high taxes. Let me come, let me come to... Uh, the sort of main pledge, if you like, of this manifesto, sure. which is another 2p of national insurance. So we had 2p off mm -hmm. announced in January, I think it was, 2p off in mm -hmm. April. Tax on work. And the polls didn't move in either of those uh, events and when they were announced. Why are you flogging a dead horse with trying to do it again? Well, because Rishi Sunak and the Conservative government believe in lower taxes on work. Yeah, but it's not lower taxes because, Steve, we've already established that people have been paying more in tax, that they've been dragged into higher tax rates while the Conservatives have been in power. So cutting yeah. 6p off okay. national insurance doesn't mean people are paying lower taxes and I, overall. And I haven't seen that manifesto that you've just been handed. You've got it before me because uh, it's being announced as we're speaking. And I do think that the next government of whichever colour needs to address the fiscal drag. No point in saying you're not raising VAT. You're adding it to private school fees. That's a raise in not the headline rate of VAT, but that's but they've announced VAT. That. Yeah. And you've announced that. So let's not pretend that isn't happening. But look, what, what are, people, the, the, the richest with the broader shoulders are already paying significant amounts of tax. And we have a faster growing economy than France, than Germany, than the United States. It's not true to say that this economy economy is wrecked and that public services are wrecked. They have big challenges for some of the reasons that I outlined But the earlier. waiting lists are hideous, aren't and, they? And when the industrial action was, was off, off the agenda, the waiting lists started to go in the right direction and the longer waits have already been cut down. But look, we can, if you want to go into waiting lists, you know that I've spent quite a bit of time looking at them when I chair... No, but I'm answering your point about parliament. whether the public services are functioning well, if you just take the NHS okay. and on that. Part of the public services are, fund, uh, are functioning well. I've just told you that 90% of schools are good or outstanding, which they weren't when we came to office. There are parts of the health service that are functioning well. Productivity is still not back to it was at pre-pandemic levels, and that has to change. The industrial action is a drag weight on the NHS right now, and I, I despair at the BMA announcing new strikes just days before the general election. And, you know, I don't know what Keir Starmer's answer is to this. You know, he says, get in the room. We've got in the room. that a 9% pay rise on the table, plus another three, a 12% well, pay rise. On that, if all of your viewers well, are getting 12% pay rise today, I, I'd love to hear from well, them, because I don't believe that they are. Right, on that, it's a fair how... Offer. Well, well, Apart from getting round the job, table, apart from getting well, well, round the well, table, well, I'll save you that line. What would you do in terms of results? No, strike? Giving, no, we're not going to give them thirty-five percent right. because we are responsible with the public finances, unlike unlike the Conservatives. And look, I mean, well, that's look, why we haven't given thirty-five percent. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, just look at what we've got today. We've got more promises from Rishi Sunak when the money is not there. Funded. And what they're not funded. Which, what, promise, which promises what, are you talking uh, about? Uh, are the all these new uh, uh, tax changes he, he's splurging out there, and all these new policies he's splurging out there, even though they've been in power for 14 years. And people will be asking themselves, what has become of Rishi Sunak? I mean, he was supposed to be the antidote to the chaos of Liz Truss. And he's morphed into her in a panic, a desperate panic. The most really expensive Tory, the most expensive manifesto in political <laughs> history we've got today. And really they cannot easy. tell us where a single penny and your piece is coming from. describing it as a Jeremy Corbyn manifesto. Ah, that would be the Jeremy now, Corbyn hang on. who tried to that make Prime e Minister let, twice. Let's just, let's, just refer, to let's just refer to this, because we had it in the headlines. Okay, and this is the Labour, this is the Labour leader being asked for his reaction to the Conservative manifesto today. Let's just have a listen to what he said. We have been absolutely clear that all our plans are fully costed, fully funded. Uh, we will not be increasing income tax, national insurance or VAT, so no tax increases for working people. None of our plans require tax rises. But this is coming from the party that's put tax to the highest level since, you know, for 70 years. And they're building this sort of Jeremy Corbyn-style manifesto where anything you want can go in it. Uh, none of it is costed. Um, it's a recipe for more of the same. 
a Corbyn, a Jeremy Corbyn style manifesto. Well, exactly, because we've got the highest bur exactly. tax burden. Say, John. The highest tax burden in seven decades. And they cannot explain where a single penny piece credibly comes right. from. <laughs> and they are splurging <laughs> mm. in Jonathan, a scattergun panic. Well, hang on, Jonathan. Exchange, Let's just change. Hang on, hang Jeremy on. Jeremy Prime Minister twice. <laughs> well, uh, Keir Starmer <laughs> sat in his shadow cabinet. Uh, I tell you what, though. I tell you what, though. This manifesto is a panic, an expensive panic from the Tories. It's making all the mistakes of Liz Truss, and if he gets re-elected, it's five more years of chaos, and people will pay more on their money. But sorry, just to, to, that, that just, just to illuminate view, just to illuminate viewers and to continue what Steve Bryan is saying, is it a good idea to remind voters uh, of Keir Starmer's predecessor, Jeremy Corbyn, yes, whose uncosted manifesto you, using your words, you and Keir Starmer stood on in the elections of 2019 and 2017? And if you remember, you lost the 2019 election yeah, catastrophically. Got hammered. Got hammered. Right. Yeah, standing on a manifesto that was uncosted by oh, Jeremy yeah. Corbyn. Keir Starmer's signed Keir... off on by Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer's changed this Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn's not a candidate. Liz Truss is a Tory candidate. In but why would you remind viewers that you Rishi supported Sunak him? Rishi Sunak won't take on the hardliners on his backbenchers. He will, they will wreck the economy ah. again. Keir Starmer has changed the Labour Party. That's firm leadership. Right. I mean, well, as a reminder, agrees. you mentioned the rebel manifesto. Yes. Is that why there is talk? We might be able to show <laughs> yes. you the headline in The Guardian. Right-wing Tories plan rebel manifesto if Sunak's policy launch falls flat. And we're already hearing reports. Too timid, it's lame, it's not going to move the dial. Would you support a rebel manifesto? Well, you can't be too timid and lame and also wildly uncosted and crazy and promising, you know, stuff that's Well, these are Conservatives saying the um, former, Labour saying the latter. My, my, Your next leader. <laughs> yes. Are you fucking uh, Sorella? We're, we're, <laughs> I, I fear, John, that she may be able to count on your support more than mine. Um, but look, my, to my colleagues that are going around talking about the after of, of the general election, win or lose, I would say there is a job to hand. Get on with it. Get out and knock up the postal voters and stop indulging yourself um, on, on, on intellectual arguments which you 